Hey guys, Paul here. Welcome back to the channel and Happy New Year to all of you. Of course, New Year, brand new accessory and brand new product. So today I have this brand new shortcut buttons that contains a lot of functions that you usually have to go to multiple menu to use it on your main screen. But now you can just use it with the click of the buttons. It sits right underneath Tesla Model 3 and Model Y main display. So in today's video, I'll show you what comes in the box and then step-by-step -step installation. And then we'll test it out, all the functions. And at the end, I'll show you what it looks like in my Tesla Model Y. Now let's go. Let's see what comes in the box of this physical toggle shortcut buttons that sits underneath your Tesla Model 3 and Model Y display from t -Lard. Here what comes in the box. Let's check out the button itself first. As you can see, there are 12 different toggles. So, um, and some of these has dual functions on one switches. So there are more than 12 functions on these physical buttons that are connected to all the functions that vary in the main display so you can easily you know use those functions by just using this button instead of go through um, a few menus to reach those options and these are the display on the top so it will light up when the car starts or you get when you get in the car and it sits right underneath your main display so it's really easy access to use these button. Um, I believe these are fixed um, functions. I'm not sure. I don't think you can um, actually modify or change the functions on these buttons. And this is the cable. This will um, install underneath the display again. And next is this modified covers underneath the display. I will show you later in the video how to do it. And a few screws or hardware. And this is the main wire harness that will connect from the button to the rear center console OBD port. And this rear center console OBD port adapter, this will connect to this wire right here. And this is the wire harness for the front passenger adjustment. So one of these buttons can also adjust the front passenger seat to go forward. Um, backward or reclining function too, which is really really cool. All right, we saw everything that came in the box. Now let me show you where you can get this product. You can get these new physical shortcut multifunction buttons from Tlard or T L Y A R D dot com, and make sure to select the right one for your car. There are many selections here, and also left hand drive or right hand drive. And if you are interested, you can use my special discount code that TC for extra. 25% off and this is after the discounts really really good deal for what it can do in your Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. Before I install the shortcut buttons, let me show you how you can save on solar panels by using drone code. Drone code is an online solar marketplace using drones for accuracy and quality assessment. Drone code is offering a free EV calculator so you can use it to calculate cost savings of driving an EV. The EV calculator is really easy and simple to use by just select your EV and driving details. It even tells you how many solar panels you would need to cover your driving. Don't forget to check out their YouTube channel for other solar and battery related content. Please be sure to click the link in the description down below for more info about Drone Code. Thank you so much Drone Code for sponsoring this video. Now let's go and install it in my Tesla Model Y. Okay, before we start the installation, let me show you what tools you need for this project. First, you need electrical tape and small wires or aluminum um, wire that you can use to fish through the wires and you will need the screwdriver and some torque bits and also hand small hand wrench 
and I believe you will need a 10 mil to unscrew there's two bolts right here underneath and a couple of the plastic pliers or the plastic removal tools and that's pretty much it now first we have to remove the panel underneath the display first let me show you real quick so this is the panel that we'll be removing and replace with the one that came with the buttons so to remove this panel you have to use this small um, plastic pliers and then press it in on the inside right there so there's like a clip on the inside to unlock it like so as you can see here now we have to remove this plug right here so this is a temperature um, interior temperature sensor that will be installing on the new cover in the back here so we just have to unplug this guy first so the unplug the temperature here there's like a little clip you can reach with your finger on the top so just you know um, use your finger fingernails and then press on the inside and then the plug will just come right out now we have this piece out we have to unscrew two screws here I believe these are two um, T20 um, torque screws and we use the T20 and then unscrew it out and this whole thing should come out as you can see this whole thing should come out and just keep these two because we will replace with the screw that came with the package which is smaller now just place the temperature sensor follow the shape on the new cover because this new cover has to cut out that um, you'll be able to insert the holder or the bracket for the buttons that came with it now we just put the screw in unfortunately the screw that came with the package which is this one is way too short to reach um, the base on this part because you see a thickness here the, those screws are too short so I'm just um, reusing the torque screw that came in with the car and it's not like perfectly fit but somehow it's you know reattach it with the panels you see it doesn't move at all so this works um, now before um, I plug it back in again let's unscrew the 10 mils let me show you real quick so these two you can see one two so these are um, the bolt that's holding the whole display so when you unscrew these uh, make sure you don't put any weight on the display at all um, it might shift so use the hand wrench small hand wrench and then just unscrew it okay before I completely unscrew the boat um, in case you know I put accidentally put the weight on the display I want to uh, remove this part of the center console first so we have to remove this part just you use your hand pull it out so there are a few clips here and then pull this one out so no screw at all um, because we have to access this part of the center console we have to fish the wires from um, the buttons down here if you didn't remove it um, it'll be hard to fish all the way to this part of the car so it's easier to fish the wires through here and then run the wire down um, next to this and then go underneath so let's remove this panel first I mentioned before there are no screws to this panel at all just use your hand gently pull it I pull it for the first time so it'll be a little loud because just metal clips this side first and then do it on the other side do the same thing on this side after all the side panels are released 
just have to pull up these, these parts. There are a couple clips here, so just pull it up top. If it's hard to pull, use one of these to help. Release it. So, like so. So, there are a couple clips. Um, three actually, one, two, three, let me show you. So you don't have to remove the entire um, trim out. Just have to pull it down. Let me show you. Just pull it down, move it down. So we have that access. So we have the access between this, so we can fish it um, down here to get the wire down all and around to the bottom. That's how we are going to run the wire. Let's try to push, try to put the um, aluminum go through so we can fish the wire down. All right, so you can see I fish through. You see my um, aluminum wire um, down here to here and then tip up the wire harness to it. So we just have to carefully pull it because the wire harness is a little thick and I also tip up um, another plug that it's um, going to connect to the seat control too so it doesn't leave hanging and stuck inside here. So now we just have to pull this down slowly. Just slowly gentle. Pull it down. As you can see, it's popping out on the bottom part right now. It's a little tight in there, so I would suggest to gently pull it little by little. As you can see, I got the wire down, come down here, and then tuck it all the way up, and then down here. After that, we're just gonna tuck it um, alongside, just underneath here, so you know it's hidden away, you don't really see it, and then just go through the back. Of the center console that's where we are going to connect to the rear center console obd board i'll show you later now this part is done i will just have to put um, the center console panel piece back in and just put just put it back in the same way and we remove it put it back in really really easy like you can do it in two minutes that's it, pretty much done. Now we can entirely unscrew those two bolts. So the bolt um, came out, both of them just save it. So we will use these same two bolts to put back in. Now we can plug in the buttons. And then just shove the rest of the wire in and then in place of those two two bolts install this um, button button underneath and then screw the two bolts back in. Make sure it's tight, not over tight because it might break the the bracket off the button because they're plastic, they're not metal. All right, it's pretty much done on both sides. Now we just have to install the sensor and this panel back in. Okay, so the same way we took it out, just tuck it back in. And just install panel back. Okay, so this is what it looks like after we attach the panel in, install the button, looks really good. So uh, it doesn't have any, um, it doesn't need any adhesive to stick on the display. It has this um, locking bracket that lock to the actual uh, display mount. It looks really, really cool. Now the next step is to run the cable to the back. So basically just, just run the cable. I'll show you so dark here, okay. Just 
um, try to push the cable underneath this. I have this um, covers, so we're just gonna push it in under the covers and then go to the back. Okay, so wiring's done. As you can see, I tuck it in underneath and it goes up here um, and then go to the back. Now, we have this connection for front passenger seat right here. Let me show you how to connect the front passenger seat control to here. Now, let's connect the pass-through for the front passenger seat control. In order to do that, you have to remove this panel out but before you can do that there's like a screw on the bottom here let me show you you can use t20 to unscrew it out so here's that screw right there you will need a t20 just right here below the seat just right that location so easiest way to remove is to use a small wrench and a t20 after you unscrew it there are clips right here so just gently pull it out just like so and then you'll see this seat control plug so this is where the seat control is and just unplug this one like a purple and yellow out and then now we just use this one I would um, suggest to put the other end this is this is where you will connect to the display underneath there's like a hole here, here. Just thread through the hole. Now connect the original plug from the car, which is purple and yellow, to the green and white, like so. And then now you just plug this one back in to the plug that we unplug from the seat control. We just plug this one back in when we unplug the seat control, and then we're done. Just put everything back and then run the cable under the seat. Now we got the seat control connected. We just have to connect to the main wire harness. There you go. Now we are ready to plug in to the rear OBD port. Okay, next step we have to remove that panel on the bottom right there. Um, you might need a little bit of help with the trim removal tools. I got these from Amazon.com. Uh, came in really handy with different projects. So I'll put the link in the description down below. Now let's remove that panel out. Okay, let's use the trim removal tools. Um, plug it in. And um, again, these, there's are no screws here, just um, basically clips. And just use another one there. So one is pop open. It's really easy to pop the whole thing out. There you go. Okay, before we disconnect that blue rear OBD port and connect this pass through for the buttons we have to turn off the car first so let's go to the main menu safety and then all the way down power off now we can safely disconnect this blue plug and then plug the white one in And then we connect the blue to white. As you can see here, like so. Now we can connect the plug from the button in the front. If I free it out, okay, so this is the way to plug it in. And then we are done here. We just have to put the cover back the same way we remove it and we good now we can power the car back on to do it you can just basically you know sit on the driver's seat or press on the brake if it doesn't do it here you go now it's back on as you can see the lights lit up on the button so when the car is off the light here goes to black, which is nice and things you don't have that um, labels all the time. Really, really nice. Um, before we go through 
all the functionalities of these buttons. Let me show you overall look in my Tesla Model Y. pretty good um, except um, I wish it extends all the way to the edge of the display um, maybe it goes from here to here and same thing right here to here but otherwise looks really nice flow with the design of the car just a little shorter than the display itself and it's really really sturdy because you know it's uh, I just we just installed it um, attached to the actual display so it doesn't fall off anytime soon all right now um, overall looks really nice I like it being like a toggle switch so it could go either up or down so it does dual functions or multiple functions on one single switch let's start with the first one first so this first one if I push it up it will release the front passenger door let's try it and then if I press it down it will release and unlash the rear passenger door both doors unlash all the way so you can just basically pull it out as you can see you don't have to press the door handles again same here just pull it out it's all the way open so it also has uh, indication lights so we know we use the function and we know the door it's open and unlashed it also shows on the display see the front you see the display the rear both opens now let's go to the next one. This is for climate control, actually for the fan speed only. Um, to turn on or to turn on the highest fan speed, just press and hold for three seconds. As you can hear, now the fan's on the highest um, speed as you at it, at it could be. It's the highest fan speed. Now press and hold. For three seconds then it goes to the lowest speed or you can manually adjust press higher higher one level each time you press which is really really convenient because you don't have to always go here and then you know while you drive just try to go one two three you know four five instead you can just use this button to adjust the speed up or down it's really really convenient I love it um, so the next one here to turn on um, to press down to turn on the rear climate um, let me see see the rear climate is off right now so press down As you can see the rear climate is on in the back I can feel the air is coming out it's really really convenient that you don't have to press on the main menu so basically two steps default you comes here you have to press here and then turn on the rear instead just one single button press down turn on press down again to turn off really really convenient and press up to adjust the fan to the front of the passenger and go to the next one here um, you press down to adjust the fan to your your feet basically and then press up to adjust both top the front and the feet Me press up again turn off the front feet only 
or you can turn everything off I think okay there you go so if it's in the middle I think it's only changed to um, the front airflow so the next button here is for the front windshield um, defrost so this one if you don't have this adjustment so you can uh, move things around um, don't have that you can just use this button here to turn on to defrost as you can hear it's blowing to defrost the windshield right now and then turn off press down lower and then off so let's go to the next button here let me turn off the AC so it doesn't um, have this loud noise the next button is really really convenient I love it as you saw in the installation we have to I um, installed the front passenger control to this unit so this is what it is for so to move front and back use this button right here so press down to move the seat back push up to move the seat forward push up to recline forward and then press down to recline to the back um, if you ask why do we need this function um, let's say you have a kid like me in the back here and you know if she wants more leg room in the back here you don't have to reach over there try to adjust because it's really hard to reach especially while you drive there's no way you can do it so it's the best way to do it so you can just basically use the button right here while you drive adjust to go forward backward and then recline move backward and forward here to really really cool function and really convenient so the next button here is for um, trunk and front so I, I believe push up for the front as you can see the front open and then you push up again and it will close if you have the auto front install if you press down you can see the trunk open and if you press down again the trunk will close really really cool and convenient I know you have it on the screen but sometimes it's easy just to do it this way and this one is for the audio control um, you can you know as a driver you can just control with the steering wheel button but this is convenience for the passenger you don't want to change the track so it's basically um, move forward I mean skip the track and then rewind or play back to the track before and the next one is really really convenient too so push up for the glove box really convenient of course you have to manually close it and the bottom one press down is for close full um, side view mirrors on both of them let's try it so press down it will fold both side view mirror and press again it will unfold it really convenient you don't have to go through the main menu and fold the mirrors much better to use it this way and the next one I like this one a lot so this one is for the wiper so you press down just adjust to manual um, wiper and then um, push up for the automatic wiper so you press down this is just manual press again so that's one speed you press again speed number two you see you press again it go faster this is number three press again this is the fastest speed on the wiper 
and press again to turn off and push up to back to auto this really really love this function really convenient instead of you know going here to wiper or you can move the wiper here but this one is it's more intuitive to use this and really easy to use too um, last button here last but not least so you push up the car is locked push again the car is unlocked and I believe this one you press down and it will open the charge port you can see the charge port open and then press again the charge port will close all right so those are all the functions on this shortcut um, toggle switches really really cool and really convenient to use um, the installation is really simple as you can see um, the hardest part would be removing this um, piece right here on the center console and fish the wire down and that's it everything else is really straightforward um, odd buttons are really really useful only one uh, button that's um, I think two I believe um, twos are not as useful as others um, like the windshield defrost because you can always you know move it here on the screen and also the front and trunk open and close because always here too uh, but otherwise everything else are really really um, convenient and useful and those are often you know you use it a lot another thing I like about these toggle switches are the the light indicator when the switches are in use like you know when you open the door see the lights is on when doors are open both doors so when I close it or when it's not in use then the switch is gone as you can see the shortcut toggle switches offer a lot of good functions that you usually use all the time I love a lot of functions on there and it's really easy to install really easy to use um, instead of go through a few menus to go through some of them now you can just click on the switch and then use those function let me know in the comment down below what you think about these brand new shortcut switches or shortcut buttons for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y and I'll make sure to put the link in the description down below and also special discount code for you too thank you so much guys for watching today's video and don't forget to click like if you like the video don't forget to subscribe for more awesome contents like this again happy new year we'll see you on the next video peace